Yeah, Sione, he's going to be on campus today. I think his flight just landed at 2.30, so okay. officially here. So uh, he'll be en route to campus today. You know, he's a, he's, an, he's intriguing. He's an intriguing guy because he probably fits that traditional fullback kind of role, you know, and so he, he fits more of the beach role. You know, the fullback in the backfield block, lead blocker, the point of attack, catching the ball in the backfield. Um, the thing that really really drew me to him was I felt like he was a good fit for our offense and what we do. So what that is is that that guy really is the hybrid guy. You know, he's 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 a lead back on one play, then he's split out, he's in the slot, he's catching the ball, then he's lined up, you know, somewhere else. We're always moving those guys. Um, his background, he'd been a linebacker. His first year at Cemetery, he was a linebacker and then he got moved to fullback and then he ended up being the first team Juco All American fullback. Um, you know and so finding that guy when I found I felt when I found him um, Benny Tonga is our, one of our player personnel guys, and with his Polynesian background, I said, I came to him, I said, Benny, surely, surely there's somebody out on the West Coast. Surely there's some Polynesian kid out on the West Coast that, that's a fullback, that no, no necker, I mean, just can, can come in and fill this role. And so he brought me five guys, and honestly, we sat and looked at them, and, and Sione just kind of fit that role. And, um, you know, so I, I'm, I'm excited to get him here. Now, it's going to be baptism by fire. I mean, I'm gonna have, we're gonna have a busy fall camp here. I got a lot of work ahead of me to get him game ready by game, August 31st. So there's probably not another guy on the team right now who steps on campus that, as far as that has to kick it in the gear right away. Um, the learning curve will be steep and be quick, um, but I, I do feel like he's got a good football mind. Just talking to him, you know, off and on. Um, he's gonna have to get acclimatized to the weather. It's a little different. I said, hey man, what's the, what's the temperature in San Mateo today? He's like, oh, it's like 77. I was like, it's 106 here today, partner. It's like 77 Celsius. Right? So, um, but I think I think he'll be a good fit for us. You know, and then another guy's going to step up, fill that role, be Britton Abbott. You know, Britton's been a journeyman, special teams guy here. He got to play a few, you know, few few snaps here and there last year. Uh, he's an intriguing kid because uh, he played quarterback at Kansas. Um, he's a 4.0 student. He's a double major. He don't say boo. He go, does his work every single day. He's evolved and, and turned himself into a good player. He worked really hard this summer. So I see both those guys kind of filling the Zach Beach role. You know, they're, those, those guys will fill that role. The Blake Jarwin role will be, will be Keenan Brown. Keenan Brown, you know, he's, um, I think he had a good spring, you know, and, and we're going to have to have a, a good fall with him as well. You know, people don't understand if you know, put this in context. That's like, you know, Making the transition, what he's done from Z receiver to tight end, yeah. that's like saying taking a kid that plays corner and turn him into a defensive end. It's a different, it's a different world inside the tackle box. That's that's big boy land. That's that's a different lifestyle. How much weight has he gained since he first got on campus? Uh, Forty pounds. That's part of the reason why he came to my room. Yeah. You know, my first year, just tell a funny story. My first year, 2015, he broke his foot, so he was out. So during training table, you know, he'd come in and he started eating, you know, our training table is unbelievable. It's five star meals, man. So those guys, he started eating. And I just make a little joke with him, like, hey, Keenan, you better stay away from that bacon, dude. Better biscuits and gravy. <laughs> he'd be like, ah, psh, whatever, coach. Well, he went to like 242. Yeah. So Coach Dunn came in, he's like, hey, man, we need to talk about Keenan. And I was like, yeah, what's up? He's like, he needs to come to your room. <laughs> he's 242 pounds. Like, he just he, he literally ate himself into a cowboy back, you know. But um, he also matured weight room-wise, and he filled out, and he just turned into a, a, a man body now. And so I remember the day, you know, Coach Dunn said, hey, you need to go see Coach Mack. So I'm sitting in my office. He come walking in. He's like, yeah. I said, come on in, man. Keenan, come on in. It's real, I tell you. It's real. The struggle is real. Yes. He sat down. I said, man, I told you. Yes. I said, welcome. And so he's been. He's been great. Uh, he wants to be good. He works at it. You know, his strengths, I mean, he's explosive. He's fast. He can come across the middle. I mean, he's not a small dude. And so um, he'll, he'll definitely fill the Blake role. Um, you know, and obviously the biggest question today is where, where where do the Cowboy backs fit in this year's offense with the, all the 10 personnel wide receivers? I mean, I don't know where, it's, where it fits, what that percentage is. I mean, your, your best offense is always play your personnel. So if that means our wide receivers are, are the best group on the field, then that means probably less cowboy back. I mean, just, that's the nature of the beast. I do know that I mean, we will have a role. I don't know what that role is going to be or what that percentage plays out, but whatever we're asked to do and whatever it is that we're called upon to do, we're going to do it. How, how, how common is that nationally where it, it seems like a lot of other schools, you, you, have, a, you have your schemes that you run, and, that's yeah. it. and it seems like here it's more like, 
Well, whatever our personnel looks like, we kind of mold, mold the offense that way. Is I think that's how you that's how you stay that's how you win ten games. Yeah. That's how you stay ahead of the curve. Is you have to you have to you have to mold and what your what your strengths are yeah. for the year. Um, and that's the vision of Coach Gundy. Yeah. I mean, that's that's his vision. That's where we, got, we kind of stay ahead of the curve a little bit. So. Um, you know, I think the, the biggest thing that this is my third year here at Oklahoma State and look back at the two previous years, 2015, we couldn't win, run away out of a brown paper bag at the end of the season. I mean, everybody was in drop eight. They were rushing three guys that said, run the ball, and we couldn't. So we came out of the 15 season and said, okay, what do we need to do? We need to run the ball 2016. So we, we ran the ball. I mean, we thousand-yard rusher, freshman All-American. Why? Because we ran the ball. And we committed to the run. And we just got good at what, our, what we were doing. And the Cowboy backs obviously were a huge part of that. And, and so we're going to continue to do that. It's still going to be a part of our offense. And if you want to throw the ball deep, then you got to run the ball. you got to suck them up on defense to get the ball over their head. So, but if you can't run the ball, they're going to play back and not let James Washington get behind them.